Hi, my name is Glenn Martinez of Olamonic Gardens. I'm working on a project with Dr. Warren Dominey, and it's funded by NOAA, and it's to make fish emulsion as a fertilizer. And so what they do is they take fish waste, and they have to mix it up and aerate it and get it to, with EM and that, to get it to um, emulsify into a liquid that the farmers could use as a fertilizer. And so when I first saw it, he was using drills in that to stir it up, and I thought to myself, wait a minute, in my farm at Olamonic Gardens, we use airlifts. And this is one of my airlifts. That's running on a little 40 watt pump running this. And I can pump water up. You notice it's very, very aerated. Now that's fish water. And that fish water being pumped from the tank, it comes over here into this sump well. And this pipe here is about five feet long. It goes about two feet in the ground. But what that does is give it lift. So I thought to myself, and I suggested to the good doctor, I said, wait a minute. How about if I took one of my air lifts and put it in a 55 gallon drum and I just stirred up your mixture for you. No moving parts, no drills, no open the bag, no exposure to flies, etc. And that's what we did. Now for me, I use the water coming up here, I pump it up and it goes into my aquaponic system and then it circulates and comes back out to the fish tank. That's what we use it for. But we also here on the farm, we have a tea maker and I'm going to show you that and then we'll go show you what we did for the good Dr. Warren Dominey. Hi, here at Olamana Gardens, we have a tea maker. This is 55 gallons of dechlorinated water. On top of here, we put a bucket inside of a bucket. We put worm castings. And if you hear there, you can hear it burping up. And what we have is an air lift down below. It fills this compartment full of water, and then it goes back down about every four minutes. So we put the worm casting. So the thought was, wow, what if we put a fish emulsion in there and we bubbled up and went down? Except you have tremendous exposure to flies and et cetera if you're going to be doing fish waste. So we had to think of a way to contain the whole thing and yet have that same mixing air and aeration possibility. So we'll go show you what we came up with. Okay, so we quickly realized that we need to have a screened enclosure. We're very grateful that Dr. Domini uh, funded doing the screen. We happened to have the platform and we were able to have enough wood on site here at Olamata Gardens. So we built a building and we put a plastic corrugated roofing on it and that. And, uh, but it was nice to have some support on our little project. So what we do, is you come over here, you'll see we have a blue tank inside. And what we did here, well, my team maker had a 55 gallon drum. This is about a 30 gallon drum. I happen to own it already. And what I did, I modified it. I cut off the bottom over here. It had two inch coming out. I put a four inch, and that's so my air lift could drop inside of this. So the air lift pumps from the very bottom all the way up to the ceiling, shoots up to the ceiling, and then splashes down. And yes, same pumping action, full of air, pumping it around. We have never clogged it, no matter how thick a solution we poured in. When it's all done, I hook up a pipe to here. I open it. And I take it outside, and it comes over here to this drum. And this drum would be laying on its side, and I go right into a fitting here, and it would fill up. As soon as it's full, when I say full, well, it's only going to be the 25 or 30 gallons out of the blue tank. So it's only half full, really. We stand it up, no problem. And then I take and I screw a cap into here, and I have a garden hose on it. And that pipe goes all the way to the bottom, with a half inch to the bottom. And I put pressurized air in this side, and then it pumps this drum up to here. And up here is something Dr. Dominic's team came up with. It's a screen and a screen. They put a bed sheet in here with a high linen count. They put the fishing bolts in here, and it drips through that cloth to here. Then I open this up. I hook a garden hose to here, and then I head across to my finishing tank. This one would be laying on its side, hooked up with a hose. It would all come into the drum. The drum would fill up half full. Then I come over here, I stand it up, no particular problem doing that, and I would hook a little air compressor, 25 watt air compressor. The same air compressor we used on our team maker over there. The smallest commercial air compressor I could find. We put it on here, and because this pipe goes down to the bottom, it just bubbles out, big bubbles. And it just really just stirs the whole thing up. In fact, I like to put 245s on the end, so I stir it around, and of course the bubbles are going to come up. 
Now, I let this go for anywhere from five to eight days, whatever the doc wants to do to season it out, and we test it. They test every day, sometimes every three days, depends on the mix. Now, when they're done and a client comes here, I then take the garden hose off of here that I was doing here, the air compressor coming in here. I switch the air compressor over to there, and I take the end of this hose, and I put it in the client's truck in whatever their container. Or it could be a five gallon bucket like this. And the trick is to put a piece of window screen over it so the flies don't get into it. But oddly enough, once it's all fermented, it is not near the fly attractor that it was before. There's a faint aroma to it. That's aroma, it's a lot better than an odor, let me tell you, okay? And so kind of a perfumey fish smell. Well, when I put compressed air into here, it pushes down on the liquid in there, pumps it up here, and it's a displacement pump, no moving parts and we're done. Now, did you notice that from the time we put the fish emulsion in the blue container and it had a screen over it and we closed the lid, it's totally contained in there. The emulsion is never exposed to the atmosphere again and, and the flies have no chance of getting to it. It's pumped with the hose from one container to another container and completely kept clean. So it's, it's an interesting project. We've been fun working with Dr. Domini on it. And uh, we're grateful to Noah for funding these projects. And my understanding is that they take this fish waste and they, they grind it all up. And the really good stuff, they make fish meal out of to feed fish. The stuff that's a little bit not quite to that standard, the rate might call the waste, that gets made into fertilizer. And it's a very nutritious fertilizer. They come out and they test it for its nitrogen level and the other ingredients that are in to it. So anyway, Good fun working with this. If you want more information, you can go to our website. It's www.olamanagardens.com. We sell books there on how to make these airlift pumps and compression pumps. You can buy them in our store there. You can also, uh, we have below in the listings on this YouTube, the NOAA information about them funding this and the name of the project and links to uh, Dr. Domini's project where he shows how they grind it up and the step before I ever see the stuff, what they do to prepare it before I get it. Anyway, that's about it. Glenn Martinez, www.olamontagardens.com. And uh, look forward to hearing from you.